going to bring in our next guest, Jason Rogers, Director of Credit Research and Financial Institutions for Barclays, joins us from Singapore this morning. Good to have you with us, Jason. What do you think about yeah, morning, these uh, new capital requirements? Uh, some say they're not really that stringent. I mean, what, what are we looking at? Four and a half percent of common equity and then uh, tier one capital to be at uh, six, close to seven percent, you can call it. Yeah, first of all, you've got to remember that capital buffers have never really good, been a good predictor or a good indicator of a bank failure. But I think the direction is generally quite positive. You know, what we're going to have now is banks operating on higher levels of capital and higher levels of liquidity, which should, as me mentioned earlier in the program, improve the resilience of the sector. But it's no means going to, you know, absolutely eliminate the risk of further banking crises. Okay, you said that there were no major surprises here. Some said that they were surprised that these rules didn't get into the double digits. You're not looking at capital requirements and tier one ratios hitting maybe 10% or more. Yeah, it's very hard to be that prescriptive and to the extent they can. Um, you know, the, definitely I think the, the higher core capital ratio that everyone is, uh, everyone is focused on, that's more than doubled. And then once you put the, the, um, the overlay for a capital conservation buffer that gets up to around 7%, so definitely a step in the right direction. You've got to remember, and I think some of the banks might have been pushing back on this, is that, you know, banks having to operate on higher levels of equity will obviously reduce returns mm -hmm. on equity and what they perhaps not, cannot justify in the current business models. Yeah, and Jason, what about the timeline here? Some said that this is pretty generous. Eight years to get the uh, capital numbers up to those levels. I mean, that seems like a, a long ways off, don't you think? Yeah, I think it is a long way off, but they've got to be sensible about, uh, sensible about it. There's no point, you know, putting capital constraints on the banking system if that's going to impinge on the ability of the banks to lend. I think that's what politicians are particularly worried about. Obviously, you know, there are potential dilution issues here from an equity standpoint. Uh, but I think, you know, a long transition period was a sensible approach. And, uh, you know, it, was, it would be very hard for each local regulator to adopt what, what was perceived to be the global standard. So there's also a, amount, a, lot of, a fair amount of flexibility uh, embedded in these guidelines at the local level. Okay, so these are positive moves, but in terms of preventing another financial crisis, I mean, how much do these rules really change the playing field in the game? Well, as I said um, earlier, I think they don't prevent a financial crisis. Nobody can say that. You know, we might, you know, the memories of the markets are, are quite short. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, as, as mentioned, it's improving the resilience of the banks. Uh, the banks that I cover in the region will be stronger, particularly from a credit perspective. Uh, and we've just got mm -hmm. to hope that uh, they don't pursue businesses which and try and, try and generate higher R R ROEs that, uh, you know, could potentially destabilize the system. So, you know, the ball is back on the court of the, the banks and also the regulators have to monitor to, you know, how, how the banks you know, develop their businesses over the next few years. Okay, so from a credit perspective, from a bondholder perspective, then, you know, with the parts of uh, these uh, Basel Committee rules, does that change the landscape at all in terms of how you view, view lenders across the Asia Pac? Well, I think, you know, the banks have been quite reliant on various forms of bank capital securities that we focus on. And under these new legislations, um, the new type of uh, capital um, securities are going to be more equity-like as opposed to debt-like. So it's quite positive for existing Tier 1 issuance, lower Tier 2, upper Tier 2 issuance, which will gradually be phased out um, up until 2023. So I think from that perspective, it's positive for bank credit spreads. Um, but again, we just don't really have a clear idea about how reliant banks are going to be on new forms of bank capital securities, which will have to have greater loss absorption features going forward. Um, and the other end mm -hmm. of the curve, you know, we're also going to have, um, you know, banks issuing, uh, you know, a lot of senior debt still in countries like Korea, India, Australia. And uh, I think net-net, um, you know, these, these, uh, these reforms are probably pro positive for credit spreads. Okay, Jason, I'm going to give you 30 seconds here. I guess a net net in the credit space. Uh, what are the best bank bonds to be buying into right now? Well, I think on a, uh, a risk-adjusted basis, I think the, uh, the Korean banks still quite look, uh, could look quite attractive given their A credit standing. Also, some of the bank capital securities out of Japan offer a bit of value. Uh, but one of the problems we have in the region is we haven't had new supply. You know, as you mentioned earlier, the, this Basel III discussions have generated a lot of uncertainty. And in light of that, banks have been holding off issuing new types of uh, capital securities. So, um, you know, there's mm -hmm. not a huge amount of liquidity in the secondary markets at the moment. Okay. Jason, thank you for that. Nice seeing you. Jason Rogers of Barclays Capital.